Michael Tilson Thomas will be one of the main figures involved with the YouTube Symphony Orchestra. For me, this has been a very exciting event because it is very free form, still very much in progress. Some of the elements of it seem to me that it's most like a kind of symphonic summit conference, that there are a lot of people who are going to be discovered through the uh, process of, of the potential of YouTube. And out of those great number, I'm sure, of fabulous artists, we will somehow make a selection to invite 100 or so to participate in this series of days of making and music airing by in and around Carnegie Hall. And I think just like at a uh, conference like Davos or some other kind of conference, that people will be bringing music and videos and things that are representative of what they do at home and what their musical lives are like and where they come from and sharing that with us. And then we'll also be making some music together, which I think won't be just orchestral music, but I think much wider range of, of kinds of music from the whole wide tradition of classical music, which, uh, you know, maybe will lead to other kinds of collaborations online or in other parts of the world in the future. And that's, I think, the, the biggest way of thinking about what much they represent. Since it's uh, a, a new idea and something that is just being introduced publicly, it sounds like it's really something that's going to take on a life of its own as it progresses. I think so. I, mean, I think the most important part of it is the establishing of the uh, site itself, of the kind of platform, which will be something that will go on uh, in time well beyond the uh, event that's going to happen here in New York, and which will really be a place where uh, a lot of people can share their, uh, their thoughts and their tastes of different performances or pedagogic helpful hints or anything that's connected with music. I mean, there's, as you are well aware, there's an enormous amount of material about music and about classical music that already is existing on YouTube. The question is kind of how to find it. And I think one of the more important things about this project is that it begins to establish... Uh, ways in which we can actually find this material and find one another. It seems to me that as fascinating as what one might imagine the final orchestra will sound and look like will be the audition process itself and what unknown things will happen. Yes, I think that as with any such thing that takes place in cyberspace, that when you're kind of putting a call out there for people to be in touch and tell you about what they're doing, you can be prepared to be surprised. How did you first become involved with this project, with YouTube? It actually was only about five or six weeks ago uh, when I was doing the opening concert at Carnegie Hall with the San Francisco Symphony, devoted to music by Leonard Bernstein, that uh, I was contacted by uh, Google YouTube and told about this project and asked if I might offer any thoughts about it, and I, I thought the project was a wonderful one, but I also had a lot of ideas of areas to explore as part of the project, especially that related to the uh, long-term presence of classical music uh, on YouTube and uh, in cyberspace in general. I really view this, this area as such an important one from the informative point of view, the investigative point of view, the promotional point of view, and really drawing people's attention to so many of the uh, great projects that are going on worldwide, many different people in different cultures very devoted to classical music. And I saw uh, this project as a, as a wonderful way of uh, launching a different sense of, of people's conception, imagination of what might be done with this medium. Michael Tilson Thomas will be one of the main figures involved with the YouTube Symphony Orchestra. Michael Tilson Thomas, thank you very much for being with us today on WFMT. Okay, my pleasure.